Welcome to Telelab. Uh, we are the Telegraph Quartet, and this is where we break apart a piece and put it back together. What we're going to do is take elements that we find really interesting to us, and we're going to isolate them out of the piece, play some examples for you on our instruments, uh, show a little bit of the score, and have some clips of us performing it before we put it all back together at the end of the video. Now, if you want to get a first listening to this, you can go ahead and jump ahead to the end of the video, listen to us perform it first, and then come back to the beginning and hear us break it apart. In this episode of Telelab, we are going to break down uh, Mitchell's Weinberg String Quartet Number no. 6, the very first movement. Um, Weinberg was a 20th century composer, a Jewish Polish composer who fled to the Soviet Union during World War II. Um, his string quartet number six was the very first one of his composition that we started exploring, and it, it was it was powerful and it was full of drama and, and story and tension. And what we found especially intriguing to us was how he presented the two main themes in the first movement, um, and we will take a look at their original personalities of those two main themes, and we'll follow those two themes throughout the first movement and see how they develop and grow up. And at some point, they, there is a, um, an um, intertwinement between those two themes that, that really made it int interesting and intriguing. The first theme that we meet in this movement is uh, this wonderfully kind of both innocent and uh, very kind of coaxing theme. Um, it is wandering around looking for something. We can't quite figure out uh, what it is. It doesn't quite know what it is, and it never seems to settle on anything in particular. Uh, what we do know is that its nature is one of intangibility, one of fluctuation, and a very kind of childlike in a way. Along with the first scene that you just heard in the first violin, we also have this uh, wonderful little sidekick uh, that is attentively falling around. It has to um, basically predict where it's going to unpredictably land at all times, and you'll hear that in the second violin part played by Eric. The second theme shows up shortly after the first one makes its appearance. And when it happens, we're not quite sure if it's going to be a good guy or a bad guy, but it sounds very um, ambiguous and but charismatic. So we know to pay very close attention to the second theme and see how it will develop throughout the movement. <laughs> For this very ambiguous second theme, Weinberg decided to give it a nice strong punctuation at the very end to show that it's really ending by uh, switching us to pitzing. And um, just that drastic change in the timbre really give it a clear indication that, and now here it's done. Now let's take a closer look at how Weinberg develops the second theme. 
The first noticeable change we're going to hear is to that sneaky character we first heard in the viola. Since the verdict is still unclear as to whether that character is the hero or the villain, the violin and the viola begin to argue about it. That once sneaky character is now becoming more confrontational and argumentative as the two start to squabble. Uh, what's interesting is that the two of them actually are saying the same thing. They're just not listening to each other. Frustrated by that argument between the violin and the viola, the cello steps in to settle the dispute. Still emotionally charged from the disagreement that one sneaky character has now been transformed into a bolder and much more defiant character. <laughs> Okay, let's now watch a performance of this section so we can see how the interactions between the instruments influence the development of the character in the piece. One of the things that I think is really cool is you'll, you'll notice when the cello steps in, breaks up the argument, um, the other two kind of have a tantrum and you know, get frustrated and take it out on the instruments forcefully with these very strong pizzicatos. Um, Meanwhile, the, the cello figure comes in and takes over, becoming the authoritarian. Now that we've heard all of these incredible developments in the second theme and how much it's changed from its original nature, it's time for us to hear how that process works for the first theme. If you remember, it was very innocent, it was very kind of unassuming, and how it was curiously looking for things, and now it's in a completely different atmosphere. It is uh, surrounded by danger or anger, a kind of intense energy, and it reflects this in the kind of desperation uh, in its emotion of trying to break free from that, and you'll hear that in the viola. If we remember back to the first theme in its original form, uh, there was this little bouncing sidekick that was attentively following it around. And that sidekick has almost betrayed the first theme in this part. It is violent, it's almost an assault on our first theme. Let's hear now how this sidekick in its more energetic and kind of violent form is bouncing around from different instruments in the quartet. Uh, we'll hear it at this moment in the first violin and the second violin uh, going back and forth very frenetically. <laughs> And finally, we get to hear how that frenetic sidekick um, and all of the various instruments pairs up with our desperate first theme. This next iteration of uh, the first theme is a little bit hard to pick up on because he's only using the very first three notes. 
and he's gonna take those three notes, he'll add some distance between it, and then add these big dramatic sliding effects. And then different people, different members of the quartet are gonna be passing around that first three note figure around the group, uh, kind of obsessively and aggressively. Let's not forget about that sidekick to that first theme as it continues to add energy to the cacophony of the section. Okay, so by now we've left the second, second theme for a while and it's time to check on its development. Um, the first time we heard the second theme, it's very sneaky and it's charming, but it doesn't really show its true color. But this time it's completely different. It's like it showed up with a whole pirate ship and just rolling in and you, you see what it's really about this time. <laughs> And here Weinberg used the same kind of uh, hits punctuation that he, he did at the beginning of the second theme and except here he also changed it quite a bit into a, a swinging kind of pit to end the second theme. At this point in the movement, we get to hear how these two themes that have undergone so much uh, end up returning somewhat to their original characters, but there are consequences, there are repercussions from going through all of that trauma. And uh, we'll hear that first in the second theme that you hear in the first violin, it kind of is missing parts. It's missing it's some rhythms, it's missing some uh, pitches, and it kind of wanders in like a ghost-like version of itself. Before we listen to how the first theme is going to kind of morph out of the second theme in this part of the quartet, let's take a listen to a little refresher of our um, original first theme. Now we'll hear the first theme morphing out of that ghost-like version of the second theme. And unlike its original version, it is higher than it was before. It's also stretched out longer. It kind of expresses maybe the, the most, um, the deepest aspects of its nature, which was to linger, uh, but it's tired at this point. And it's gonna reach up finally to this high note and just uh, sit there timelessly. In that stretched out version of the first theme, the cello helps the first violin by completing the melody after he gets stuck way up in the stratosphere on that high note, effectively coaxing the first violinist back down to earth to join the rest of the quartet and bring the movement to an end. Now let's watch a clip of the quartet performing this section so we can hear it in context.
Now that we've finished exploring these two themes and seen how they evolve throughout the piece, we'll put it all back together in an uninterrupted performance of the first movement, Weinberg's Sixth String Quartet.
Thank you for joining us in our first Telelab episode. As always, we enjoyed making this video for you guys and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We look forward to seeing you guys in our next Telelab.